Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my studio. This video is for the studio acoustics nerds out there. Those who are always making some small chains, bigger chains in order to improve the listening experience they have in their room. Recently, I went through some changes in my studio, which slightly improved the way that I listen to music. And in this video, I want to document the process. Let's get it started. This is how my studio is set right now. The desk is as close as possible to the wall. And in the middle of the two speakers, I have this panel here, which I've modified to fit between the two speakers. It's also a thinner panel so that the desk can go up and down because this is a standing desk without touching the panel. And also I can put the camera here for when I do my videos. Now, how was it before? Well, probably you don't remember, but I had two thick panels, one behind one speaker, one behind the other speaker, and I placed them there because I was hoping they were doing good. You know, they were absorbing any reflections from the wall and making the sound good. But actually, they weren't doing good because they weren't absorbing the low frequencies. And so there was a phase problem between the direct waveform from the speaker and the reflection from the back uh, of the speaker, from the wall in the back of the speaker. And so I couldn't hear the low frequencies very well in this position. It was very hard for me mixing um, with my speakers because the lows were lacking. What I could hear was a low frequency reverb from that side of the, of the room. So what is at my shoulders when I'm making music. I got an advice from someone, don't remember who, but thank you. Um, it told me you should push the, the desk as close as possible to the wall. So you limit that phase difference from the sound reflecting from the wall. Because, you know, the best situation is when your speaker is inside the wall. So there is no distance between the speaker and the driver and the wall itself. In this case, it's obviously not possible, but you want to stay as close as you can. So in the end, I decided to listen to him and I tried. I just want to clarify that this situation where you push the speakers as close to the wall as possible is ideal for smaller rooms like mine is, but on bigger rooms, you actually can have your desk and your speakers that are placed at a certain distance from the wall without having problems. It depends always on the size of the room, on the proportions and the modes, which modes you want to attenuate, which modes are creating problems and so on. On. So as you can see, there are no more panels behind my desk. The next thing was that I didn't want my voice to go against the wall and come back to my microphone when I was making videos, doing lessons. So I wanted to put that panel over there, but the panels I had were wider, so I had to modify it. I need to cut it like this length and put it in the middle of the two speakers. It's a bit tricky because there is not much space here, uh, but it's enough to have it and to be able to move the desk up and down because this is a standing desk. And so I had to head to my dad's workshop in order to work on that. Hey buddy. I'm taking advantage of the fact that I'm visiting my parents to use my dad's workshop and modify this panel. Stay away, come on. We have a bit of a bad boy here. So basically what I want to do is slightly reduce the width of the panel so they can fit in between two monitors in my studio. So it won't be an easy task because when I did this, I secured the joints with glue. So it won't be easy to remove, you know, all the nails that I used and the glue itself. So wish me luck. Okay, that was actually easier than I thought. Congratulations to me that I destroyed my finger and nail with a screwdriver. But let's keep going. It's almost there. So I'll cut here. I'll cut here, then put back the horizontal beam and the reinforce and, and that's it. And I also have to cut the polyester fiber and the job is done then. And there we go. I cut, I closed, 
cut the polyester and now I'm ready to nail the last piece of wood and to close the wrapping and I spent a nice afternoon doing something and dirty in my hands which is always you know a good way to get out of the studio now that panel is installed i rearranged the older panels that i had there on that wall in the back they are kind of working as base traps on the back wall so that one is the thickest one and i hope it will absorb some of the low frequencies placed over there it was one of the two that were placed in front of me the second one is that one that's a thinner one which is up there didn't know where else to put and this is my, you know, proud work of modifying this panel. Now it can, if I raise up the table, it fits in the back of the table. Still space for my camera to place here. The monitors, as you can see, are the closest possible to the wall. Couldn't go closer because of the cables. All right, so after these changes in my room, I wanna test with sound ID, if also the frequency response of the room changed. My expectation is that it has, but who knows, this could be only a placebo effect and what I hear is not different from before. I, I really hope it's not like that though. In the meantime, I am uploading a new video on Patreon. This month we have Per Hammer as a guest. He will share some tips on how to get a better mix, specifically how to handle the kick and bass relationship and how to use his new device, Subcontrol, to get the best out of our bass lines. Join us on Patreon. So let's have a look at what happened here. So this is the old graph. And this is the newer one. So the first surprising thing is that if I think about before, my problem was that I wasn't hearing a lot of low, uh, low frequencies. I thought there were a lot of cancellations. Uh, but if I look at the older graph, you can see that there are not big cuts on the lows. Uh, just uh, up on the higher frequencies, but here on the very low frequencies, most of the problems are a bass boost because of the room modes. So you can see this is uh, way above zero. This is out of control. This is out of control. So the problem was more a boost in the low frequencies rather than a cut. So I don't understand why I was hearing so little bass line. Probably it was because Sonarworks to attenuate these boosts was pushing too much down the low frequencies, I don't know. So in the new situation, we have even more boosts on the low ends. And this is quite understandable because if I push the speakers toward the wall, there will be more buildup of the low frequencies because of the phase summing of what come out of the speaker and what reflects on the wall but i have a little bit less of a problem here in this from let's say 200 to 300 or 400 hertz actually this area is quite annoying this is where you don't like your kicks you don't like your bass line because they are very boomy so i'm happy that this got better i'm just wondering how i will hear the sound after applying sonarworks calibration when it tries to push down this area here and this area here but most of all this area here which is almost a 12 db boost on the lows right that's super interesting it's better now with the new calibration I was using the older calibration before, even after I moved the speakers and there was a bit of boominess on the low end. Now with the new calibration, it feels much more control. I know very well how this track sound, of course, because it's a track of mine. It sounds good. I'm happy about how it's sounding. <laughs> Yeah, the, the bass, the low end is more precise. Of course, I have some 
vibrations from the furniture in the back from the door but yeah I, I have to live with that usually I listen to the music way quieter so it's not a problem the sound quality is good I'm happy with that so yeah that's an interesting result and and obviously without sonarworks is horrible so it's it's impossible to make music without sonarworks i'm not sure you can hear it from my microphone but it's horrible <laughs> All right, guys, so this is it for this update. It's a small improvement or better, a minimal improvement, but those are the type of improvements that we like. Hope you like this video. Share your studio situation in the comments and I hope to see you in the next video.